I'm a guy that's 24. Each day I build some more. I like episode 7 and episode 8. I'm Rich Boy J. Hello boyos, Rich Boy J here back in with another video and this is going to be another episode of the LEGO Star Wars Mock Showcase. This series has been created to highlight some of the best mocks that I've come across on the internet so if you find any of the mocks in this video impressive, all I ask is that you go to the links I've included in the description and support the builders by giving them a like, comment, or even a follow. The first mock we're going to look at today is titled Purging the Jedi and it is by JS Ninjaner, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, but we can see we have a Trandosian Jedi followed by two clones gunners through some pretty impressive terrain like that's really the thing that made me put this in the mock showcase i think the usage of colors and the just various parts usages in this terrain looks absolutely incredible it really does make you want to see the builder do something like this at an even larger scale because i really think he's on to something with some of the techniques he's developed here um I first got to talk about that colorful rock formation to the left of the mock that is just absolutely beautiful i love the transition from the tan at the bottom to the dark tan to the i think that's like medium nougat and then up top there's the burnt orange if i'm not mistaken and it looks really good like i just i love that so much it makes this mop pop very well i think the olive green like plant pieces scattered around the floor of the desert also looks really nice and um, one thing i probably would have ever thought to use for the floor of a desert are those like two by two round tiles that he has there there's even like a dish there as well but it does a really good job at kind of simulating the like cracked ground uh, and like the crevices in the ground of like the desert floor so i think that actually looks really nice with future mocks that i have planned i've been doing a lot of looking at just various types of like rock work and how people are building just different parts of deserts and this is one of those builds i looked at and i was like oh i'll definitely have to take some design inspiration from this build because i think the builder did a wonderful job at you know making a pretty small sized mock just look so visually impressive especially with a i don't know something you don't typically see like this type of desert in, in star wars i think if you were to continue a build like this and um, add even more elements to it you could make a pretty visually impressive desert star wars mock with the current Coruscant Speeder build contest that I'm hosting, which you can still enter by the way, this next mock was really a no-brainer to incorporate into the mock showcase. It's titled Bounty Hunter Assault on Coruscant by Hypolite Bricks, and there is just so much to talk about here. Um, let's actually just start at the bottom level of the mock and kind of work our way up. So at the very bottom, he did a pretty outstanding job at greebling the floor of Coruscant. I feel like this is one of the things you really have to think pretty deeply about when you're building any mock kind of based around Coruscant because we see so many just huge skyscraper buildings we never often see the floor so that begs the question you know how do i want to design the the very bottom of my coruscant mock and i think that doing this kind of greebling job actually goes a long way and this guy took it all the way like there's there's so much greebling here um i feel like it, it's kind of at the point of maybe pushing the boundary of being too much but i still wouldn't say that because it looks good to me it still looks visually appealing to me so i give him a lot of credit for for that there's just so many different types of pieces used here like if i went and talked about all the various pieces here i think i could spend a whole mock showcase just on that but one thing i will say is that it just it works well together um it, it works well to make a cohesive like floor of coruscant so I give him a lot of credit for that if we move slightly upward we get a look at the bounty hunter speeder and this is i think my favorite part of this build um it mostly looks like the lego set with some modern modifications and recolors of course but I think the figures in this are just incredible. So it looks like there's some, you know, group of people, I don't know, they might be like senators or whatever uh, here in this uh, Coruscant speeder. And then they're just being assaulted um, by the, the bounty hunters. So I like that. There's a variety of species here. Like you have your uh, Twi'lek, the Rodian, and then two humans, of course. But they're all kind of freaking out. It looks like the, the Twi'lek is on her comm, maybe alerting someone to come get help them out i'm um, also like that they're all in the same outfit it kind of gives them some uniformity so um just little things like that i always talk about here in these mock showcases that um tell a, a story within your mock where you don't need to explain it you can just look at what's going on here obviously that group in the speeder are all working together in some way and they're being assaulted by the two bounty hunters on either side of the build 
I also like how there's a Coruscant security clone on the speeder as well, doing his job, doing his best to try to uh, subvert this assault that is happening on this group of whoever these people are. But um, I don't know how well it's going to work out for them, considering the bounty hunter on the left side has a freaking flamethrower. Um, but yeah, I think that this 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 part of the mock alone, like if he just built this this speeder kind of by itself with this crew of people on it, I think this would still be an incredible mock. But there's also just so many other things going on with it that I really appreciate about this build. Uh, if we move upward again, we get a look at two bounty hunters. One of them over to the left side is uh, mostly rocking Boba Fett's. If we move a little upwards, we get a look at our bounty hunters to the left side. I'm just gonna assume that's probably supposed to be Boba Fett. I mean, he has Boba's hair, um, looks like he even has a clone face, and of course he's wearing Boba's armor. So pretty, I guess, safe to assume that's probably Boba Fett. Over to the right, we have, um, I guess, Oris. Not, it's not necessarily Orisane. It looks like maybe um, Harris and Dula's body and like an Orisane looking face with hair um, i don't know if it's supposed to be or saying who knows but um the, the last bounty hunter is a commando droid he just looks like he's holding like a thermal detonator of some sort about to toss it down onto the group and he's even got a bag of loot with him how awesome is that and then we have a um probe droid looking droid at the top left corner so clearly these adversaries are putting up quite a fight they've probably planned this um, assault out quite extensively given how they all seem to be having different roles in this particular assault. Uh, one of the things I really love about this build are the various designs put into the building. Like I love those, um, I don't know necessarily what you'd call the piece, but it's the piece that they use for the front cockpit window of TIE Fighters as well as the top hatch on TIE Fighters, but it's just in plain light bluish gray. I think that's a really good detail to add to the side of a building just to give a little bit more detail. And of course, people are still finding creative ways to use the, um, the spring loaded shooter launcher and builds and you can see here it makes a pretty nice pattern on the side of this building so maybe i should stop just tossing all those to the side and actually incorporate them in a build some way like clearly people are finding good uses for them um over to the right side there's a pretty cool looking speeder in dark green i actually like that speeder design quite a bit um it's next to the girl bounty hunter on that platform and you can see there's even like a little door to kind of access the inside of the building and then if we move further to the top, and there's just so much going on with this build, uh, we just look at the, the top of the building. I love the usage of that, um, the old school tie cockpit piece, but it's in the light bluish gray for the top of the building. I think it actually integrates pretty seamlessly into the actual building. Like a piece like that is pretty specialized. You maybe wouldn't find too many uses for it, but I think that is an incredible usage of that piece right there. One other thing that also stuck out to me are these windscreen pieces used on the right side of the top of the dark bluish gray building um those wind screens are actually the ones from the bounty hunter pursuit set used on the speeder that obi-wan gets i'm sorry the speeder that anakin gets and then obi-wan gets irritated with anakin in it but um i don't know that's a piece you don't really see used too often so i kind of like that he threw that in there especially on a build that's supposed to be taking place on coruscant with a coruscant speeder um i just love this build so much like i <laughs> really there's nothing about this build that i don't like i love the build techniques with it I love the fact that there's a Coruscant speeder in it. I love the like usage of mini figs. They all look diverse. They tell a really nice story with the build. And um, it's just a wonderful build all around. Like I, I can't say enough about this thing. I think I actually love this build. Next up is this week's photography based build and it is the Death Star debriefing scene from Star Wars Episode 4. Um, I promise I'm not trying to have these just dominated by uh, Episode 4 pictures, but you guys know I love Episode 4 so much and I've been coming across some just really nice photographs from it. But uh, this is such a cool looking photo. I love the, I don't, know, I don't necessarily want to say the filter used on this photo, but I guess just the lighting and it really does give it a cinematic kind of feel. and the diversity of minifigures hanging around here, just the various pilots you have. Um, I do, however, spot some Snowspeeder pilots who should not be here. You can tell that by their back collar. So um, Hachiroku, make sure you uh, tighten that up the next time you take a photo like this. No, I'm just kidding. But I just love the diversity of the figures used in this. And of course you have Leia off to the right with R2. We have Luke in the foreground and some um, resist resistance, oh God, some rebel generals throughout the photo just to kind of 
perspective, um, show some diversity within the ranks. And uh, this is so cool. Like this looks like something pulled straight out of a Lego rendition of a uh, Star Wars film. And I just, I, I love this so much. I love these, these photos, especially when they're taken at kind of minifig eye level that really just takes you into the photo makes you feel like you're actually there amongst the many figs those are some of my favorite types of lego star wars photos not really too much to talk about in terms of the build here like the walls are pretty simple and the actual like death star schematic is also just probably something he printed out and put on the screen right there but i think it's just a cool looking photo the final mock we're going to talk about today is an incredible incredible Scarif mock by Lou Jones and Amy Jennings. And this is honestly one that I'm shocked kind of flew under the radar. Like I hadn't even seen anything about it until just recently. And I thought, oh, I absolutely have to talk about this on the mock showcase. Um, it's no secret that I love the location of Scarif. I mean, I'm just such a mark for any type of Scarif mock. If I see Scarif, I'm, I'm, my eyes are instantly drawn towards it. And I think that these two did an incredible job with their build. It is, there I might say, the best Scarif build out there, at least that I've seen. Um, there's certain things, of course, that I would do differently, like incorporating more of my own and others' uh, custom ships and just things like that. But um, for the most part, just the certain design choices they made and just how correct everything is for the most part. As someone who spent so much time looking at various stills and images from Scarif and seeing how, kind of how everything worked together and what everything should look like, um, it amazes me just how correct these two got most of the aspects of Scarif and that was really one of the things that just made me go oh like this is a pretty incredible mock like if Garrett and I had <laughs> a decent amount of time to actually work on our Scarif build I imagine it would have been um at least somewhat more closely aligned with this like we obviously didn't have the pieces to build something of this size but we would have done a lot more of the the choice we would have made a lot more of the choices that they made in designing this build so um to just talk about it in a general sense and a few of the things that really stuck out to me the citadel is definitely the first thing i mean it is freaking massive i love the size of the citadel i still think the top half of it could be a bit taller but when you're getting into builds that are like seven and maybe even eight feet tall it does seem like a bit much to, to go oh i think it could be three or four feet taller so i'm not gonna harp too much on it but what i will say about the citadel is i think the shape of it looks really great especially from the second half down you can see that they clearly drew a lot of inspiration from um chris production and rebel like scarif mock and um even mine in in garrett's mock they did a little write-up kind of talking about the design process and um, Chris and Garrett and I were the two groups that they mentioned that they actually really like looked at YouTube videos of to get reference for it. So that really stuck out to me because I remember like it really doesn't feel that long ago me and Garrett were like looking at videos of Chris working on Scarif and David working on Scarif and all these people working on Scarif and kind of figuring out maybe what elements that they incorporated that we want to, wanted to put into our mock so to see that that's literally come full circle and that there are people out there who are like looking at the Scarif mock that Garrett and I did to influence their own mock just means the world to me it really warms my heart um it, I mean it's crazy as it sounds it really doesn't feel that long ago to me that I was like looking up to and admiring other YouTubers and kind of figure out how to get my start in this. So now, you know, a few years later that I'm having that same impact on people really tells me that I'm doing something right and that I'm, I'm putting into this community what I initially got out to it. And that's really one of my biggest goals. But outside of those personal feelings um, about the actual mock, like I said, I think the Citadel looks absolutely incredible. One of the things that I love they did on this build is they actually incorporated a correct version of that platform that sits right in front of the Citadel. For one, it's circular. Two, it has the five tracks that are coming out of it that kind of form the Imperial logo, which is so crucial. That's something that Gary and I tried to attempt we ended up really having one accurate track and then just like the other ones were kind of just things we threw together at the last minute but if you look at this build like they actually have the 
the tracks that go in and out of the that like below that platform right in front of the citadel which is great because like i feel like that's like one of the key parts of scarif right like if you're gonna build the citadel you gotta have the area right out front of it correct as well and i think they just did a really good job at like capturing that circle where the water is sitting in there and they even use monorail tracks um, i'm honestly not sure if it's a functioning like um cargo crate like if it actually goes back and forth through the mock from all the videos i've seen if it, i haven't seen it actually in motion it could be functional i literally have no idea um if it is i think that's freaking awesome but the fact that it's on that monorail track tells me that I mean, if it's not functional they intended at some point for it to be functional so i give them a ton of credit for doing that one of the other um, great things about this build is the that it's it's a good balance between land and water. Like Scarif, you have to consider is a pretty great percentage of water, and the land forms in it are just kind of islands. So you should be trying to achieve that with your build, having you know not too much land, which is a slight amount of water around it. And I think they certainly achieve that, especially if you go to this next photo. You just get a really solid look at the the landscape of this build and how much of it is actual just water. And I think that's actually super important when you're building Scarif. Um, I love how, you know, if you look at that main track, it's kind of going out to the Zeta class, which is cool because that's telling the part of the story where like the heroes come in, they get out of the Zeta class and they take that shuttle to the actual like inside of the, the Citadel. But one other thing they incorporated into this that I actually haven't seen a ton of people incorporate is like some of the other tracks that they have coming out actually themselves lead to other bunkers. Like if you look at the very bottom of this build you can see that there's the bunker where like the ambush is happening so there's like all the troops and they're actually drawing the um empire out of the citadel which is just awesome like when garrett and i were designing scarif one of the most important things to us were actually tell it was actually telling the story of the battle um, with the mock because Scarif's one of those battles where there's actually a pretty cohesive story that's happening throughout it so you want to be able to tell that story with your build and you can see they're absolutely doing that by having the one bunker where the rebels initially get out and Jin and Cassie and K2 make their way into the citadel but then the second bunker where they actually draw the troops out of the citadel to allow Jin and Cassie to be successful on the inside so just little things like that I feel go such a long way in mocks like these and showing that these people really spent a lot of time in planning this out they weren't just enamored with the idea of, oh let's just make a star wars battle and do whatever we want anywhere but like let's actually tell the story that's being told in the film um and basically our interpretation of it through lego and i think that that is just amazing like that is literally what I try to accomplish every single time I build any large scale mock. So um, the fact that these people did such an excellent job at it really means a lot to me. If we move on to the next photo, we get a better look at the entire mock and you can honestly see right here, just kind of how inspired by the Rebel Lug display this is. Like obviously you have the giant Citadel sitting towards the back and at the very front, you have the main landing platform and then the cargo crate that would go straight into the Citadel. So um, you can see the influences there. If we move on to the next picture, we get a better look at the actual Citadel. I think that if you look at the Citadel, you can see it is very clearly inspired by Chris's design, even down to the, the fact that they have the um, Critic shuttle sitting there right on that, that platform. And I think that's that's freaking incredible. Like when Garrett and I built our Citadel, like it wasn't a small Citadel by any means. So we certainly didn't have enough room to put a full size, not necessarily a full size, but a playset size Critic shuttle on the landing platform. So the fact that they were able able to do that is just incredible like that is a giant citadel the next photo gives you a better look at the in, entire battle as a whole so you can see they have an ATAT, -AT, a lego set ATAT -AT, modded it to an ATACT. -AT. they have an x-wing flying around there's the u-wing flying around as well being chased by a custom tie reaper and there's even a tie striker over to the right side and if you actually look like further into the distance there's actually a blue squadron x-wing flying on the left side of the citadel so there's just a great variety of ships and there's of course even the custom Zeta class sitting on that giant landing platform. So um, just the, the, the great variety of ships they used in this mock, I think is, is awesome. Um, I can't help but take a little bit of credit maybe for that landing platform design. Like obviously, like if you look at it, anyone could like, arrive at this design for the landing platform, but it looks like they probably took a lot of inspiration from the landing platform I built for my Zeta. Just with how the orange arrows are constructed and those like orange lines on the edges of the build, um, I don't know, I think that's kind of cool to see like little elements of, of my build being, being done. 
I think it's just so cool to see like little elements of my own build being put into other people's builds. Next photo is a great look at the back of the Citadel. And I think this is just awesome. Like I think a lot of people make such a point to build, you know, a Citadel of whatever size, but to actually go through and add the interior rooms and to actually have, you know, a decent balance between like Easter egg rooms, but then also correct rooms that belong in the Citadel and done well um, goes a long way. Uh, one thing I, I have to immediately point out right off the bat is just the layout of this is almost exact to um, how Garrett and I laid ours out, at least for the middle part, because like at the very, at the kind of midsection of the middle of the Citadel, you have the room where Krennic would be looking out onto the battlefield saying, are we blind, deploy the garrison. Right above that, you have the room where Jen and Cassian would be basically in the control room trying to access the uh, actual archives and, and get the Death Star plans. And then above that, you have the actual giant archive room that just goes to the very top of the build. Uh, one thing I love that they actually incorporated is that like archive control panel room. That was something that Garrett and I wanted to put into our mock, but our Citadel was just too small to have that first room where K2 is like shooting off are shooting at the stormtroopers and then also have that room right behind it where there would be that little control room but then still have room to have the archives go all the way down behind that i know it's super hard to explain that type of thing without actually showing you so hopefully that at least made a little sense but i do appreciate that they incorporated that into their build next up we have some photos of just some of the interior rooms they incorporated and i think that garrett and i have to take credit for this one they put a lego store in the citadel um, this is something that we actually uh, threw into our Citadel and I think it's cool to see other people putting Lego stores into their mocks because the Lego store is a happy place and it always makes for a fun Easter egg. And that was probably the, the room we got the greatest reaction from at the convention, people seeing the um, Lego store we incorporated into our build. Next up is kind of like a, a classic space type of room. There's a Stormtrooper just flying a speeder with like a trans green background behind him. Um, this is that control panel room where they would actually be access like the way you're supposed to access the, um, the the archives. I think Jen ends up breaking through and actually going in and climbing herself um, after it gets shut down. But um, this is a really cool room to incorporate. I feel like a lot of people that do Scarif don't build this room. So I'm actually really happy they did. And the fact that they incorporated lights behind it as well goes a long way. At the very bottom, you see they have a little um, like <laughs> Imperial coffee stand, which is kind of funny. Um, we got various troops kind of standing around and you know just, just making their way about just handling typical day-to-day -day business. And then this is a better view of the kind of con the main control center where Krennic initially arrives and looks out onto the battlefield. This was one of the most fun rooms to build on, on Scarif and they've recreated it here. And I like that there's you know, a variety of Imperial officers kind of standing around, um, especially the fact that they've switched um, around some of the faces, I think, to not make them just all one person. I think that's super important. Next up, and I thought this was pretty funny. He had, they incorporate it like a little theater room and it looks like they're watching the Lego movie, which is actually hilarious. Like that's a pretty cool Easter egg to incorporate into a build. Next up, I'm honestly not sure what this is supposed to be like. It, it, like, it looks like it might be a, a hair salon, but there's like, perfume bottles and such. I mean, I'm, I'm not entirely sure exactly what this room is supposed to be, but uh, it looks cool. It looks, it definitely would stick out if you're looking at an Imperial mock, but that pretty much finishes it up for the actual interior of the build. If we go back to the outside, you can see that um, some of these just like, not necessarily eye level shots, but low level shots of the build really just convey how massive this mock is. Like kind of looking at it from this perspective, you get such a nice view of of course the palm trees, but then the U-wing flying and then the giant citadel kind of looming in the background with Krennic's own shuttle sitting on the landing platform there. Also made it a point to incorporate this photo. This is one of the more memorable scenes from Scarif where Baze shoots the AT-ACT right in the face. Doesn't do much damage though. And then this last photo is just a better look at that landing platform they incorporated. So um, I'm so happy I got to talk about this build. Like this is just such an awesome Scarif mock. Um, as many Scarif mocks as there are out there, I honestly wish there were more of them, more people who um, attempted to build a large scale Citadel because I think Scarif just makes for such an incredible mock design and these people definitely knocked it out of the park.